Great. Well, we're so excited for tonight. We're excited to share some really good info with you guys. Um, all about ergonomics, all about uh, your daily activity, your work life, and how to do that without pain. Um, how to uh, work at your desk, how to stand, how to do some exercises, how to sleep um, without causing pain. So it's going to be really great. Lifting. Lifting. Yeah. Lots of good stuff. Um, we do have a PowerPoint for you that we're going to go through and um, we'll kind of go through that and then we'll do more questions at the end. And also if you feel like you want to record this on your, um, on your phone, just because the PowerPoint is, is very extensive and there's a lot of really good information, research articles, things like that, feel free to uh, do it. It's not copyrighted and we're just sharing it with you guys to try to make a mm -hmm. bigger impact and uh, have less people hurting. Mm -hmm. So, so talk a little bit about your experience with ergonomics and posture and how, what you've kind of seen in terms of injury and um, yeah, well, effective bad posture. You know, I had a life changing experience when I met a chiropractor, when my wife and I were living in Santa Cruz and I had these chronic symptoms from the time five years earlier when I was in a bad whiplash. And um, my symptoms just got worse and worse. I didn't take the chiropractor's advice in terms of what he was suggesting that um, I do. And because um, the insurance company said they weren't gonna pay for my car unless I signed that I was done with care and I needed more care, but I didn't opt for it. I was a 21 year old without a lot of wisdom and opted just for the, um, the car money. So um, my symptoms got worse and worse. And then my friend said, oh, you should go to a chiropractor. I said, nah, I'm not really into that kind of stuff that much. And he says, hey, just go um, do it. I'm going to pay for your first visit. I said, okay, I'll go. And then he, um, he showed me my x-rays and showed me where I had these deviations and said that my chronic neck pain, my chronic mid-back pain, my sinus problems were most likely caused from that. And then he asked me, um, what do you want to do about these symptoms that you got? And I said, well, I want them to go away. And he said, well, do you want them to go away for a day, a week, a month, a year, forever? <clears throat> what are we trying to do? And I said, well, forever would be good. He goes, well, then we have to get to the cause. We have to correct the cause. So my pre and post x-rays are in my office showing where I started and where I was nine months later. And it completely fixed my postural distortions. My symptoms went away in the first three months. And then the last six months was all about me understanding why I would be going to see a chiropractic doctor when I didn't have any symptoms. It's because I said I wanted to fix it for good. So just think of a, a remodel type of uh, project that you've maybe done at your house, uh, bathroom, kitchen, front room, or even uh, using orthodontics and braces on your teeth because when they, you know, you have to keep them on and you have to go through a process you get some water for me? Of course. <clears throat> and, um, but then when your teeth are finally straight, you all know what you're supposed to do when your, your braces come off, right? Does anybody know? Anybody have braces? Yeah, you did. I got it. So <laughs> those that had braces know it's called a retainer. And the retainer was just to keep things straight so they didn't have a tendency to want to go backwards. Um, so let's get into, you can finish what you were saying and then we'll get Well, I, I think what was amazing was that fixing my posture caused my symptoms to go away and go away for good. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to show you tonight is a lot of um, research about posture and then how, how it's not only caused by the injuries that we've had in our life. You know, California OSHA has said, that the average little six-year-old boy has had approximately 200 traumas, so about one every 10 days, um, you know, as a child is growing up. And those, those injuries will cause a, a loosening of the ligaments, even a tearing of the ligaments and tendons. And then gravity is pushing down on us at 15 pounds per square inch. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of weight per square inch. Yeah. So our spine and our body and our posture is designed to handle the effects of gravity so that we don't prematurely age and prematurely have degenerative changes of our spine and disc herniations and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So in that, 
understanding that posture is really the fix and understanding also that we're doing things on a regular basis, sometimes sitting in a chair can be causing our posture to get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. It's not only about the accidents that we've had, but it's our ergonomics and what we're doing to our body. And everybody knows about texting neck, take, putting your head down like mm -hmm. this and doing that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get started with the PowerPoint here. All right, so sitting is the new smoking. Pretty crazy um, idea there, but yeah, why is that? Well, that's, that's a quote from an American medical journal, um, sitting is the new smoking, because so many people are having poor health because of sitting, and we're gonna show you some of the research that's out there, and sitting in a wrong way. What's your reason for being on this webinar, being on this Facebook Live? What do you wanna get out of tonight? What are your questions? Just kinda of check in with yourself and, and ask yourself, why am I here? What do I wanna get out of this? Yeah, what we wanna do is bring value to you and your life. Um, we want to have you have some takeaways that really do make a, a change for you and your family and people that you love. Um, and I'm sure you can share this if you, if you find it valuable, but that's our intention of why we're here. And I'm glad you asked why, why you're here. That's <laughs> why we're here. Why are you here? So yes. we want to make sure that it's a value. Okay. So I'm going to use these glasses here because yeah. I'm turning 66 in a month and, Ooh. and I, I find that using reading glasses it can help mm -hmm. you know and i'm pretty sure pretty sure that tom hanks saw me wearing these and then he wore them for the academy awards pretty sure yeah i'm pretty sure yeah you were the style, yeah, I'm pretty style sure, guy yeah. so what's the problem well the problem is that the average american spends six to eight hours a day sitting that is a long amazing time. yeah I know I don't because I'm up and, and moving around and treating people. That's nice. But it's, it's amazing. So what happens when you sit? Well, let's just all do a quick experiment to show you the effects of how you breathe, the amount of oxygen you, that you receive into your lungs, and how much oxygen goes to your heart so your heart can pump it through your entire body. So let's just all do this. Put your shoulders back, take a big breath in, and see how much air you can get in. Hold it and let it go. <sighs> now I want you to roll your shoulders forward, put your neck out forward, and try that again. <sighs> Anybody feel a difference? Huge yeah. difference. Your, your maximum uh, lung capacity is reduced about 50% when you do that. You just can't physically get as much air in as you can with good posture. Wow. So it's really important to realize how you're sitting and what that can do. So here's what happens when you sit. Your lungs and chest constrict, makes it harder to breathe and less heart blood flow pump. That means less oxygen. And that's what we just demonstrated. You also have a smaller space for digestion. Sure. Just remember, if you crunch forward like this and look with your head here, now your internal organs are being squashed and that's not good for your digestion. Your, your small intestine, your stomach, your large intestine need to move. They need to be open and moving, not compressed. Mm -hmm. And then you also can get sore from lactic acid buildup. That's just because you're not moving. Movement gets that lactic acid out of the area mm. um, and being stagnant um, causes it to build up. Now, what does lactic acid do? It's pro-inflammatory, meaning you're gonna feel more pain um, in your body, stiffness, achiness, if there's more lactic acid. And then the spine was not to be in a sitting position for that long. Now, if you see on the bottom here, it says research published in the Journal of Circulation say that no amount of physical activity is enough to combat the dangerous health effects of sitting for many hours a day. So those of you who have sitting jobs, we're going to show you how to combat this little um, skills that you can learn and utilize to help with your job if you do have to sit a lot. So sitting is the new smoking. This is from the uh, Annals of Internal Medicine, um, 2015. They're basically just saying that it's extremely dangerous and it's unhealthy, just like we showed in the slide previous. Mm -hmm. So it is something that um, is having deleterious effects deleterious. on our health. Great word. 
Now here's, here's research out of um, many different British sports medicine journal, American Journal of Epidemiology, Men's Health, University of Missouri. So look at these with me. Sitting increased risk for diabetes, obesity, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Isn't that interesting? Dang. You're not moving. You're going to have more problems. You're going to gain weight. You're going to most likely get diabetes. And that just that lack of movement causes fat to, um, it's called internal um, fat that surrounds the organs. Mm. And that's what fatty liver disease is. Fat infiltrates into the liver. Oh, wow. And then people who sit for the majority of the day are 54% more likely to die of a heart attack. Wow. Isn't that interesting? We got to move. We got to move. We got to move. And then every hour sitting in front of a TV reduces life expectancy by 22 minutes. That's crazy. Like what? British Journal of Sports Medicine. So if you're a big TV watcher, you might just want to push pause, get up, and we'll do, do a couple exercises at least every hour. Get up and move around. Yeah. Um, you know, push pause. Mm -hmm. So... And then sitting is responsible for 170,000 cases of cancer every year. Wow. Whoa. 170,000. Your body's stagnant. And, mm -hmm. and stagnant bodies do not function well. Your immune system doesn't function well. You're not able to go after and find those cancer cells because everybody's got cancer cells in them. It's your white blood cells that are going after it. But your white blood cells become stagnant and they don't move much if that's yeah, they, you know, you got a stagnant body. So, mm -hmm. all right. Text neck and the dangers of technology. You'll see here almost 80% of the population between ages 18 to 44 have their cell phones with them almost every waking minute with only two hours of the day spent without them on hand. Now we have that. Um, we are a texting generation. Yeah. And, and the good thing is hold your, hold your phone up here. Yes. Try to get it at this level so you can be texting here instead of down here. Mm -hmm. Every inch forward that you'll see here, every inch forward that, you're, that the center of your ear is over your shoulder, it adds an additional 10 pounds to the weight of your head. And that's not good. Mm -mm. So extensive cell phone uses, use and posture causes changes consistent with an aged spine but are now being found in younger age groups. I, the, the youngest person I ever saw with a big bone spur in their neck was 19 years old. That kid had been injured when he was young. He was in a car accident. Since nothing was broken, nothing was bleeding, they basically said, you'll be fine, kid. But his neck healed like this, and that extra pressure from gravity and his head being too far forward put all this pressure on a living bone, and that... Uh, is called the piezoelectric effect. What happens on living bone, if you put more pressure, then it, sit, it starts pulling minerals towards it into the scar tissue that happened as a result of the injury. And that's how we get bone spurs. It's degenerative osteoarthritis. Wow. So it's not a good thing. And posture and old injuries are at the core of it all. Oh, dang. All right, next slide. Is that a question? Nope. Okay. We'll do that later. All right. So... So let's just look at um, what do I do? Well, with all the information out there, it's hard to know what to do and how to do it. But let's just take a look at the human embryo. If you look down at the bottom, you see fertilization, and then you see three and a half weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. By six weeks, look at that spinal cord all the way through there, connecting the brain with the body. This is the system that communicates all the other systems. It's, a, it's the spinal uh, cord and the brain, the central nervous system. How the body heals. Did the ointment heal me? Did the cast heal me? No. no. The body healed me. The Your body, body is made to heal itself. And, and what was neat about that slide, and those of you who heard me talk before, I, I really like to bring home the miracle of the the, the birth process, the conception process, two cells come together, and then nine months later, out comes a masterpiece. The normal body um, creates two and a half million red blood cells every second, 250,000 white blood cells every single second. And, um, and you know, you cut, your, you cut yourself, a scab forms, it falls off. 
There's 657 functions of the liver. The body knows how to heal. It's designed to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, it wasn't the Band-Aid. It wasn't the ointment. It was, wasn't the cast. It was your own body that's designed to heal itself. Mm -hmm. And another adage is the power that made the body heals the body. I love that. So we have wound healing and bone healing right there as well. Yeah, it's basically your body goes through a healing process. When there's an injury, you have an inflammation stage for three days. Then your body goes into the repair stage for, that lasts up to 12 weeks. And then the remodeling part at the end, um, where your body now shifts based on what, how it healed, um, goes up on up to a year. So um, it's, it's a process that a lot of times this is what caused our earlier problems. And many people that do say that they want to fix their, their problem for good and not just get temporary relief, then they know there's a process to go through much like the orthodontic model of putting braces on. The benefits are massive. For me, it changed my life, got me out of the chronic pain that I had been in for five years. It was getting worse and worse and worse and uh, just made a massive effect on me. So. so the spine and posture effect and moderate every physiologic function from breathing to hormone production. Yep. That's it's the nervous amazing. system. So now we're going to get kind of technical, give you some really good tools, practical stuff that you can do to relieve pain. I want you to go through those. All right. Five ways to reduce the effects of sitting. Um, and this is going to support your nervous system. So we're going to talk about lumbar support, workstation setup, how to move, three specific stretches, and consume this one thing more often. So lumbar support, good lumbar support in a chair is really important. It forces your shoulders back and it creates good curvature in the low back. So there's, um, for those of you on Facebook, you can't see, but there's something you can attach to your chair that basically helps to support the low back and yeah. bring the curve back in. It's a little rounded lumbar support. Um, those, you, you can see it. Um, they're inexpensive. You can go online and get one or we can order one for you. Uh, but it basically helps to give you a little bit of curve back into your uh, lumbar spine. If you're going on a long drive, a lot of people drive with them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people um, use some of those PT balls for chairs at their workstation, and then they're always engaging their core, and they're having to sit up straight. That's so, good. Yeah. Work out while you sit. All right. Now, workstation height is really important. So the head, you always want your head to be neutral or slightly up. You don't want to be looking down. You don't want to be looking down at your laptop. You don't want to be looking down at your phone. So a lot of people need to put something underneath their computer to lift it up so that it's right at eye level. We have books underneath um, the computer here to lift them up. Mm -hmm. So ideal is to go like um, straight on, but no more than 15 degrees of a head tilt down to do it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, also, a standing desk is amazing. That's like the best option. If you can do that at your work or when you're working at home, that's the best way to go. Yeah. Um, but if you're sitting, make sure your head is in proper alignment. Um, now, this diagram that we have here just kind of shows some angles, no more than 15% looking down, and um, there's some good kind of info on that. And you see the woman, you see her spine, the reason that we want you sitting like that is because you're going to have a good curvature in your low back and then you're going to have the proper curvature in your, in your neck. neck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is how not to be too fatigued. We'll show you how to avoid sitting fatigue in a second here. All right. Now moving is so important. It's so important to move throughout your day. They say even like if you go and sit for eight hours and then do a half an hour workout, it's not even really going to even an hour workout. Yeah. Even an hour workout. It's not as, beneficial as being moving throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is every 60 minutes, you want to move for at least two minutes. So set yourself a timer at work, set yourself a timer at home if you're sitting and put it on for 60 minutes. And yep. when that timer comes up, you got to move for two minutes. Yeah. And, and, and there's, you know, just a guy doing some basic squats. I mean, that is a great, great exercise. Just get up from your chair and go down, blow out as you go down and breathe in as you come up but just that alone will mm -hmm. really help. Yeah. So here are some really good stretches you can do at work, at home, 
as you move. So um, you guys can do them if you're watching, just join and do these with us. But um, the cat cow stretch, most of us know this is just on your hands and knees, you're just gonna arch your back and then curve your back and go back and forth. That's a really good the one. The extension stretch, basically, I like to do this one just in circles where I stand up and then just try to bring my hips around one way and around the other one. Do that about five times and then come back around the other way mm -hmm. and leaning back. So you're just going to take your body all the way around. Mm. And that feels really good. And it, it helps to bring a little bit more fluid into your discs. Um, remember, your discs are primarily water and they're like sponges. And at night, your discs pick up the fluid as your horizontal. And then when you we stand up and we sit, then that fluid is being like pushing on a sponge from top and bottom, it starts pushing the liquid out of the, of the disc, which is really important to keep those hydrated. So mm -hmm. we'll talk more about that. And then the wobble chair, we have a wobble chair here and have the melons. It's basically a chair that moves and allows you to move your hips um, as you're sitting on it. So yeah. that's a good one. And then um, number five would be, what's the one thing you should be consuming more throughout the day is water. It hydrates the muscles, the discs, and forces regular movement to an empty bladder, or to empty the bladder. Yeah, and, and that's good. You know, the thing on water, usually if you set your timer for um, every 30 minutes, try to drink, uh, you know, four to six ounces of water every 30 minutes and then move every 60 minutes. So mm -hmm. if, you've got, if you've got a 30 minute deal, you're gonna reach over, you're gonna have some of your water, and then and the, on the next 30 minutes, you're gonna get up, you're gonna have some more water, and you're gonna do two minutes of exercise, take a walk around the office, or if that's gonna make a problem for your, your boss, then just do your whole little routine right there at your desk, and you're trying to keep from having a work comp injury of having a disc problem that they have to pay for. So taking a two minute rest is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So beyond working outside of your office at home or your work environment, what are some other really important things to keep your posture healthy in all your daily activities? So one of those things, what do we spend so much time in our life doing? A third of our life basically is sleeping. Sleeping. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So how do we want to sleep? Well, I think most experts agree that sleeping on your back, unless it makes you snore like crazy, is probably the very best thing for you. And if you take a, um, for example, a down pillow, I usually recommend people um, get a down pillow, Bed Bath & Beyond, something, Strouds, what have you. Mm -hmm. I usually will get a good one. I like the longer one. And then I'll usually put it through a, a gentle cycle on the washing machine and the dryer the first time before I use it. So it's not all big and puffy and does this to your head if, if you're laying against it. So the idea is you take the pillow, I usually flatten it out on my stomach, put it behind my neck and just roll it under a little bit to give me something underneath my neck. Mm -hmm. So that's good. If you do snore when you're on your back, then side line is the best. Most uh, experts agree that if you lay on your right side, it's better for your heart because you're not having the weight of your lungs pushing on your heart all, all night long. So if you don't have a right shoulder problem, then um, you can lay on your right hand side and then bring your knees over or put a pillow in between your knees to give you um, a level playing field with one knee and the other knee here because the pelvis is here, you can put a pillow underneath your knees mm. in the middle of them. And then um, the worst thing you can do is really sleep face down, twisting your neck all night long. I've had so many patients over the course of 34 years of treating patients that come in and they slept wrong and they're just tweaked and I've got to work them out of a, of a major kink. Ooh, not fun. Okay, so standing, how do we want to stand? Well, the, the most important thing with standing is don't lean over to one side or the other, have one leg straight and the other one bent. It's better to have both legs um, slightly bent. Um, if you do find yourself always having one leg straight and the other leg bent, it most likely means is that the bent leg itself is anatomically shorter than the other one. And that is something we can usually find right on x-rays. Um, it also means that your sacroiliac joints, the biggest joints, 
where that little bump is in the back off the side of your spine, those may be stuck and not moving like they should or, or maybe even misalign chronically. So um, that's the best thing you want to do there. And then, um, you know, there's a famous trainer. Um, he purposely didn't become a, a medical doctor or a chiropractor or a physical therapist because he didn't want to be governed in those, those rules. His name is Paul Check. And there's a book that I recommend for everybody if you want to know more about um, core training and diet and exercise. It's called How to Move, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy by Paul Check, C-H-E-K. Mm -hmm. And, um, but he always talks about like the, the priorities of what is important, um, to us. If, if you, well, let's just say the first priority is get a person out of pain. The second priority is to start to work on improving their flexibility. Their third is stability, postural stability. The fourth is strengthening. And the fifth is power. If you're out exercising, with doing power and strengthening moves, but you've got flexibility issues or stability issues, the risk of you having an event of pain or herniated a disc is much, much greater. So the idea here is to warm up, get flexibility. I can show you if you, anybody of you work with your arms or your hands in carpentry or you're an athlete, there's a, um, a really good shoulder warm up. I'll just show you real quick, okay? Yeah. Show us. All right. So what you do is you take, why don't you move back a little bit. So here's your fingers, your hands go like this. Your thumbs are pointing forward and you straighten your arm out and we're going to go to both sides and you start doing little tiny forward circles with your arms. Now, if that causes any pain, I want you to drop down and try it at a lower level and make sure that it doesn't hurt at all. If it hurts at all, you got to keep on going, even if you're down to your side, if you've got a bad shoulder. But ideally, eventually you'll get up to here because this will really help your shoulder to calm down um, and not hurt as much. So I usually start people off with 30 forward circles and then take your thumbs, take your thumbs and go backwards now, keep your arms straight and go backwards circles. Do 30 of these. And then take your knuckles and put them on your, on your temples and put your, uh, don't bend your wrist, just take straight arm and, and wrist like that and bend them forward. These are called elbow curls. So you have forward arm circles with your hand like that and arm like that, one straight line there. You, eventually you can get up to about 100 um, before you work out with weights or something. I do 100 of these, 100 of these, and 100 of these before I work out. And if you want to get more advanced, you can do them while you're standing on a Bozu ball. Or if you really want to get advanced, you can kneel on a PT ball and do them to warm up your shoulders and your core at the same time. Yeah, this is lifting. So one of the most common things I've heard over these 34 years of people that herniated a disc, yeah, I went over to, you know, get pick something up and that was it. I got a lightning bolt from from somewhere and uh, and I have now I have this horrible pain down my leg and I have you know foot drop or what have you um, you never want to twist excuse me twist and lift that can put up to 2,000 pounds of torsion hmm. on your disc itself always face something let's say a, a grandchild or a child wants to come up to you and wants to be held held by mommy or daddy so just um, face them lift them up put them on your lap um, don't twist and lift at all. And um, that's, that is the most common cause of a disc injury. Hmm. And then the other thing is if you're going to lift a heavy object, um, don't be too proud. I mean, that's the second most common thing is someone lifted something and they shouldn't. The third one is actually tying their shoe because they're just, they're, they're not mobile and they're asking their body to be stable and flexible but it's not working and then they tear a disc. So if you're gonna lift a heavy, heavy object, always ask for help or use a dolly. And this is just using physics to your advantage and it's being wise. Yeah. All right, so your spine. Yeah, well this is, this is just how the nervous system works. This, the generator 
of all the life force that we use to run our organs, to move our body, um, to st stand upright. We, uh, one researcher found that 90% of the energy that the brain produces is used just to keep us um, in relation to gravity. So we're not mm. flat on the ground, like a jellyfish yeah. out of water, you know, flat. So 90%, only 10% has to do with organ function and thinking and healing, only 10%. Wow. And that's if you have normal posture. If you have postural distortions, you're going to rob part of that precious 10% um, to deal with a distortion. And this was from a, a famous um, Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Roger Sperry. He found this out. So the brain re, uh, requires feedback from the spine through proper alignment and movement in order to deliver the right information to all the muscles, organs, and tissues. So there's a sensory system and a motor system, and it requires both systems giving feedback to each other uh, to function how it should. Hmm. So cool. So why is the spine so important? Well, everybody knows this sad story on the left, Christopher Reeves. He uh, broke his neck and he was paralyzed here and, and he went down soon after that. Um, here's what a spine looks like on dissection, dissection. This is the spinal cord and this is what's underneath the bones. You can see the spinal cord and then you have these little tracks, these little nerve roots going off to the side. That's what goes to the, the head and the eyes and then to the throat and then to starting to get to the um, thyroid gland and to the arms for strength in your hands and arms. Um, all these go to those areas of your body. Mm -hmm. That's why you wanna really fix your posture, have good ergonomics, so your body can be as healthy as it can. Mm -hmm. So what's the subluxation? Well, that's interference in the brain and nervous system from a spinal vertebra not aligned or moving properly or poor posture. It just means that the energy can't flow like it's designed to. And it, it's very much like if, if you and I were holding a garden hose and we were looking at each other from each end and we're looking, I see your eye and you see my eye, and now we both lean way, way back. What happens to the diameter of a garden hose if that happens? Smaller. Smaller. That's right. You get another A+. plus. Yeah. And much like a garden hose, if there's a kink in that garden hose, what's going to happen to the plants on the other end that are supposed to be getting watered by that garden hose? They won't get watered. And what happens then? They're going to die. That's right. So proper nervous system function is key. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're talking about ergonomics where this all comes in. You know, this is really interesting. And if you do have the screen um, share on Zoom, you'll see big um, research projects that have come out that help that show that the, the movement of the spine, the posture really helped to keep us healthy and um, have a better quality of life. So you have one of them um, show uh, that manipulations, which the Chinese doctors have been doing for 3000 years, really help um, to make measurable changes in your hormonal balance. Um, then the next one is the role of spinal manipulation in addressing disordered semi-motor integration and altered motor control. Just means your body is gonna work better, um, it's gonna move better if you have proper nervous system alignment. And then, um, can you put that, move that over for a second? And then changes in the H reflex. Uh, these are just, um, this has to do with muscle control again and cerebral metabolic oh yeah your metabol your metabolic rate in terms of how well you digest food and if you have a tendency to gain extra weight when you would rather not that can be um controlled by this as well this is all just research a lot of people like science like science okay so some warning signs of an improperly functioning spine and nervous system would be these kind of symptoms fatigue digestive problems poor sleep shoulder pain inability to focus headaches, a low metabolism, back pain, breathing problems, high blood pressure, inflammation and swollen joints, diabetes and blood, blood sugar issues, neck pain, anxiety, depression. So there's a lot that has to do with the right and th functioning of the And this is all spine. based on research. Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead. So the World Health Organization said that a state that what defines health? So when we think of just being a healthy person, what defines that? It's a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. So that's what we talk a lot about here. You know, we say that our vision is restorative healing unto your most flourishing life. So we don't just want you to be not having disease or infirmity. We want you to be flourishing. We want you to be fully um, in your vibrant well-being and living life pain-free, active, and joyful. Yep. So posture. so posture predicts long, longevity and mortality. It's interesting. They found that if people have too much curve, you notice like little old people like this, that will make them die uh, 44% sooner than if they had a right posture. And that's because the heart and lungs are having to so, work so much, much harder. Wow. And um, Oh, another 298 participants found all measures of health status are decreased when you have these postural distortions and their solution is to do surgery. And then accumulated evidence shows how important spinal posture is for age populations and maintaining independence in everyday life, meaning you don't need a walker, you don't need crutches, you don't need to be in a wheelchair if your posture is good and your body's moving. Mm -hmm. So group exercise, one quick one for the neck. If you have yourself a tendency to be on your texting phone, is just do this. Bring your head way back, hold it for five seconds, and then let it relax. Bring it way back, hold it for five seconds, and then relax it. That will start to stimulate the muscles in the back called the extensor muscles. And that's what helps to give you that curve back again. So many people are way out here here. I do a postural assessment and we even take the x-rays to find out exactly where someone's posture is compared to normal. And then you can see, okay, here's where we are. Is it going to get better on its own or is gravity going to let up on just that person? Gravity doesn't let up on anybody, does it? So it's just going to get worse and worse and worse if we don't take the action to correct it. Mm, I like that exercise. I want to do that the other day. You want to do this one? Yeah. So the research says that monthly chiropractic adjustments retard the progression of adhesion formation, joint degeneration, neur neuronal? Neuronal, changes. neuronal changes, and changes in muscular strength and recruitment patterns. So the effect of long-term maintenance chiropractic care on the spine is so important because it helps to keep us from all these things. Yeah, and that's just, that's just wellness care. That's after the, the rehab part is done, you mm -hmm. fix your body, then just stay healthy, get adjusted every month, and uh, you know, get some tissue work, maybe a massage, something like that. Just stay healthy. Mm -hmm. It's like a tune-up and oil change on your car. Yeah. Keep our bodies moving. All right, research note. So daily exercise for one hour with the same daily sitting habits does not mitigate the effects of sitting. So we kind of talked about that. Yeah. You might think like, oh, okay, it's okay if I'm sitting for eight hours. It just as long as I work out for an hour. But it's not going to help to combat all those negative effects that we talked about. So really moving throughout your day is gonna be so important for you. And then how do you test for nervous system dysfunction? Well, we do range of motion assessments and see where that's at. We feel the areas of pain and feel for muscle spasm. Um, we don't do the EMG or thermography, but we do take um, low dose digital x-rays, which can we can then put into this $10,000 software that we purchased that helps people to see exactly where they are mm. compared to normal. And then yeah. we can chart their progress as they get better and better. And then also checking for people's posture. It's so cool to like find out where your posture is at. It's like, Oh, do, do I have lack of curve in my neck? Do I have too much curve in my low back? Do I have too little curve in my low back? And then from there you can really figure out, yeah. okay, what needs to be done when yeah. I know. And then you can get a specific prescription of home care exercises mm -hmm. and in-office care to actually start fixing it. Mm -hmm. Just like a construction project, like a remodel, you'll see things get better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. um, so posture predicts your longevity and your mortality. Posture affects and moderates physiological function from breathing to nervous system function. And despite the considerable evidence that posture affects 
physiology and function, the significant influence of posture on health is not addressed by most physicians. So a lot of us aren't getting very much of this education about how important our posture is. Yeah. And so that's why this is really awesome that you guys are on here with us is you're getting more of a taste and education on just how important our posture really is and that we need to focus on it. We need to give it the time that it's due and the energy and invest in healing our posture. Because the benefits are massive, mm -hmm. massive, major quality of life changes if yep. you fix your posture. Mm -hmm. If you don't, the advancing complications of not fixing it, it's pain, it's poor quality of life, it's depression. Mm -hmm. It affects your all your relationships. If you're in pain, mm -hmm. you're pissed off easily. I mean, it. I see it for 34 years. I've seen the effects of people coming in late or or starting really late on the process because they're already in that kind of scenario. And I'm mm -hmm. sure maybe some of you are already experiencing some of those things, or someone you know and care about is. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times, you know, if it's not completely fused then there is hope to actually make a change. Um, okay, good. We'll get to the questions in just a moment. We're almost done here. All right, so success rate for conventional management for stress. Well, just as, you know, conservative care is usually the best option to do first before you go into much more aggressive um, surgical and pharmaceutical management of a health problem. Mm -hmm. So you'll see there, um, is U.S. health really the best in the world? 44,000 to 98,000 Americans die every year due to medical error. It's just because it's not as conservative. So there's a, there's a, less, a lesser margin of error if you've got someone that maybe mixed up their medication or took the wrong medication or, or died in surgery. You know, so, mm -hmm. um, and then the benefits of U.S. healthcare currently delivers may not outweigh the harm that it Im empires, and the incident of serious and fatal uh, adverse drug reactions in the hospital was found to be extremely high, um, extremely high. I think there's a number in there. I remember something like over 200,000 deaths deaths are a year are attributed to just um, an an unproper ratio of certain medications that you're taking. So the idea is not to have to take any medications. Mm -hmm. Or have to do surgery. Yeah. You want to prevent that. So yeah, of course, we always have an offer for people that want to know more. And and um, it, our, our standard fees are much higher than this. But, um, you know, if, if it is something that you or a friend want to come in and, and be checked out and take a look at, there's no pressure to do anything if you decide that you want to do something, well, we would love to help you. Mm -hmm. If you decide that you only want to get some exercises recommended to you, we can do that. If you only want relief care and get a few treatments to start feeling a little bit better, we can do that. So it's really a choice of each one of our patients. I don't want anyone to ever feel like they were given more than what they wanted. We only make our plans of care based on what people say they want. So um, we, we would love to offer that um, to you. How do they go about doing that if they wanted to? Yeah, so you can call us at 949-497-2553. That's our number here. Just leave a voicemail. Let us know that you were watching the ergonomics webinar and we will um, honor that $97 special for you um, to come in, get your posture looked at, do a full evaluation, really talk with the doctors about whatever symptoms that you're experiencing and they can take a look at what are the root causes and how can we get you to be where you want to be um, so and, you can and if if we find the abnormalities in the exam we'll go ahead and take the low dose digital x-rays and put them through our our plan we uh, through our program and then we can sit down with you um, the following day or a day or two after and most people like to bring their spouse because they want their spouse to know what's going on with them or that well, I have found that if spouses understand what's going on with their their spouse then um, the uh, the results are 30 to 50 percent faster if there's mm -hmm. no stress at home about doing it. It's like, yeah, I value you. Yes, I value your quality of life. Yes, I want you to be happy and I want you out of pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, is this something we want to invest in? Just like if you thought it was a value to buy a car or or do a remodel of your bathroom or kitchen, it doesn't have value. Then you gotta get your you know find the right person to do the job 
get your funding laid out and get started on the project and have mm -hmm. inspections along the way to make sure it's working. And then finally you get to move in. Yeah. It's fun. So. It's a good project. Hi, do we have a couple questions we wanted to? Yeah. So, oh, we do have a, just a testimony of one of our patients who got her posture fixed, who did spinal rehabilitation for her bulging discs. And it's pretty amazing. She came in with um, severe migraines, visual disturbances, extreme pressure and pain in her shoulders, her neck, her head. And she, she went to a bunch of doctors. Um, they, you know, gave her medications. Uh, Vicodin, muscle relaxers, and nothing really ever helped. So she came in here and she started doing care with us. Um, we looked deeper, did an MRI, found out she had some bulging discs, and she did the non-surgical spinal rehabilitation system, which incorporates chiropractic and hands-on therapy, um, spinal decompression, and a lot of different treatments, her home care exercises to restore her posture, and she hasn't had a migraine since. So it's pretty amazing what can happen when you fix your posture and when you get to the root of the issue. Um, and, and then we just believe that, you know, every human deserves to have a chiropractor. Every human deserves to have the help that they're looking for. Um, some of these stats are really crazy about just what we, sometimes we don't even recognize that our posture isn't good or that we have disc problems or anything until much later when the pain really starts to hit. But some of these um, numbers show that 37% of asymptomatic 20 year olds have disc herniation already. Degeneration. Degeneration. At 20 years old, disc degeneration and 37 are asymptomatic. 30% um, of 20 year olds have disc bulges with no symptoms. And 29% have disc protrusion with no symptoms. All the way up to 96% of asymptomatic 80-year-olds have disc degeneration. So it's and more this, widespread than we That other study think. there in, in Scotland, um, found they took 154 um, MRIs of 10-year-olds, and they found that um, none of the children had ever had problems with their back, but they, they got in this study. And they found that 14 children had signs of intervertebral disc degeneration on their MRI scans at 10 years old. Mm. So this goes back to the 200 traumas that they got before they were six. And now they're distorting their posture and gravity's jamming down on them. The discs are already degenerated at 10 years old. It's like, crazy. what the heck? Yeah. This is why it's so important for everybody to just be under regular care. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not us, go find somebody that you like, that you trust, and keep your body well maintained. The Chinese have been doing this for 3,000 years. They've been adjusting the spine, working on tissue, give, doing exercises. This mm -hmm. is not new. It's just that the pharmaceutical companies really don't want people to know this information because... It works. And because... You'll be healthy and you won't have to get surgery. And because... And take drugs. That's right. Because you won't be taking drugs. Yep. So they would prefer not to have you be watching this and knowing how this all works. True. <laughs> Um, awesome. So yeah, that's what our in invitation is to you is to come in, do an evaluation, take a look at your posture, take a look at your body, your areas of pain, your symptoms, and we would love to help you. So like I said, you can call us at 949-497-2553 and just say, hey, I was on the webinar. I want to get the $97 special. You can also visit our website at health in balance.com and um, go on there there's a tab that says schedule an appointment and in the notes section there just say I was on the ergonomics webinar and I want to get the $97 special we'll do a full evaluation for you on that um, I know we had a few questions throughout so I wanted to make sure that we um, hit all of those so we said um, someone said I mostly stand while working I'm here for tips on ergonomics for standing while working and exercising during the day to maintain a good posture. I think we kind of covered that. That was before we got to any yep, of that. Yeah, that's good. Um, someone said they have the um, lumbar supports at Dollar Tree. That's, that's good to awesome. know. And then um, do any intel on insurance coverage for chiropractic? We do have coverage for um, chiropractic here, and we do a um, complimentary insurance verification for you when you come in to let you know all of your benefits based on your specific plan. I don't know if any of you have been noticing that we're paying more and more for insurance and we're getting less and less, and that's what happened with all these healthcare changes that happened uh, six or seven years ago. So many people don't have coverage for reparative work anymore, but what they do have is they have a higher premium that, that, that they're paying and they're getting less and less. 
but mm -hmm. they are covered for a crisis like a surgery that may be needed or um, uh, you know a horrible infection or pneumonia going to the hospital um, or a, a horrible trauma bad car accident broken bones all that stuff that's what it's for the other mm -hmm. stuff is considered a choice it's yeah. a choice that you have found that there's value in staying healthy and getting out of pain and so you know, we will bill whatever insurance people have. We'll be able to sit down with you and tell you what that is. And then um, it's commonly, a lot of it is out of pocket investment that you decide to invest in yourself for not only for your quality of life now, but for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you guys, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you got a lot of really good information and some tools that you can implement starting tonight with your sleeping with your pillow and tomorrow while you're working just keep moving sit in a proper way we want you to have all the tools that you need to live a healthy life and um that's really what we've been wanting to do you know throughout these past couple months especially during this time of quarantine is just give you tools give you support be here for you in this time and um uh, we would love to have you in that offer is good for you for the next day so uh, we'll honor that um you can give us a call 949-497-2553 or sign up at healthandbalance.com and we'll schedule people, an appointment yeah a lot of people buy them for their friends or family members and True. just go hey i got a gift for you yeah and that's it so. all right we'll see you next time and um thanks for joining us